Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you back. Um, today I'm going to do uh, another video on scope wheels. Uh, this particular model is from um, Joe Garland at JDS Custom Design. And I'll get you the contact information all that a little bit later. So we'll, we'll do a little something at the end of the video. Uh, what I want to show today is, is his new uh, generation, second generation uh, scope wheel. And by that, it, it, the really cool thing about this is how it attaches to your scope and the simplicity in how to get one of these and make sure it's right. I, I don't know if you've ever ordered a uh, custom made 3D scope wheel and got it in and it doesn't fit. It's too big. It's too small. It's this, it's that. It's, it's wrong, basically. Okay. So his wheels, you're going to get away from that. You will give him the, uh, the diameter of the wheel measured in millimeters. Okay. You'll measure the turret, the largest component, largest out, out, outer part of the, of the turret. This is the, the Hawk Sidewinder uh, second generation scope. And it's just got a little grip ring around it. And that's the part you want to measure because that's what the wheel has to fit over. Okay, so it needs to be the, the larger. And I know that people have done this in the past and, and gotten the wrong wheel, one that wouldn't fit, wouldn't fit correctly. And they've had to modify it to make it work. You don't have to do that anymore. That's what's cool about this. Plus, uh, I think there's even an opportunity for it to fit uh, a couple of different scopes if your turrets are approximately the same size. Now, I've yet to come across that. <laughs> but you know it, it's a possibility but i'll show you i'll show you the design so it, it's basically three components uh, first of all you have the hold this up so you can kind of see there's a slot at the top okay so so this is the split ring this is actually what comes in contact with the parallax turret okay and then the part outside of that is the outer hub uh, and I'll show you again up in close detail a little bit later. Uh, it has two set screws right here. And, and the idea is, if you haven't already figured this out, how this works, is that this inner ring goes into this outer hub. And it'll come, it'll come assembled for you, so you don't have to worry about it. And then the set screws push down on this inner ring. It tightens it down over the... Uh, parallax turret okay so you have a little bit of a tolerance you have that that ring and as the set screws go down it collapses around this so it doesn't leave set screw marks which is kind of cool uh, a lot of 3d design type of wheels and even some of the aluminum ones are held on by set screws and you don't have to worry about that anymore you don't have to worry about over tightening and damaging your your turret because you now have a clamping design now the one thing that joe did retain in his design if you're familiar with it is the magnetic locking device. Now you'll notice there are two little silver dots right there and you may or may not be able to see the, the interior of this in the video, but again, I'll show it to you close up. Uh, so you still have that and so it becomes a locking device. Now what's unique about this is this is actually keyed right here, has a little, has a, uh, a male tab and there's a female slot here. Oh, jerked it right out of my hand. So those magnets really do grip. So that is how it's held on. Okay. Um, so you can separate it and you can put this in your bag in your case in terms of shipping because when you think about it and i think i mentioned this in one of the earlier videos or i know it was in a post i put in what you don't want to do is you don't want this thing staying on the scope because you could do undo harm to your parallax turret particularly if you've got an expensive scope this is not a cheap scope at least for me it's not a cheap scope so i'm going to try and do my best to take care of this the best way i possibly can and I think using one of his designs is the way to do that. So I can remove this and put this in my carry bag that I use to transport the, the gun uh, to the range and not have to worry about this thing being banged around and getting hit and putting torque on this or breaking this and you know, just, just so much of a hassle. Things you don't need. These are things you don't need. Okay, you don't need the grief of that. Uh, the other thing he's come up with, which is uh, kind of a sidebar to uh, field target is he's come up with as he calls it a speed wheel and it's just a simply a round wheel it replaces a lot of scopes this one came one came with a four inch wheel uh, from the factory which is really great because if you're not shooting field target if you're just 
hunting or, or doing some activity along that line that doesn't require the precision and the accuracy of, of the marks. I've already pre-marked this too, by the way, uh, on your scope wheel. Excuse me. Um, you don't need to know those. This is the way to go because it allows you to you know, grab a hold of it and turn, which turning this is a whole lot easier than turning this. Well, this system works with this as well. So you can, you can get both. Now where this is becoming really popular is in the Hunter Field Target Extreme class. So Extreme, you can use a range finder. You don't have to range using your scope. So it's not important to have the markings on the scope or on the scope wheels to know how far it is approximation to your target. But it is important to have something you can kind of get a hold of and, and, and find and, and get it in the focal because you're going to use your range finder to do that. And this too, obviously, is held on by a magnet and it, it comes off. You can to click and this thing comes off. So you don't have to transport it with this. And the beauty of this too is look how wide that is. I mean, you can get up there and, and get a fairly good grip on it. It's about the size of the pad of my fingers so that you get a good positive feel for the, uh, for the hub. Plus, this is kind of cool too. I'll share this with you. Um, his scope wheels come with, and here's, here's another example of the uh, uh, speed wheel. It comes with his logo, JD. Okay, so that little insert is standard on all the scopes if you're, if you're not specific. Well, I like the novelty of things, and I had him made this one for me, and then it's got a prairie dog. I do prairie dog hunting, and I thought this was kind of cool. You know, let's, let's do this is for my prairie dogs. Um, this scope being a hawk scope, hawk optic scope, I sent him an image of a hawk, and he was able to put it in here the other things he does he does things like color if you want something if you want a, a specific color like this is really really cool I, I got one of these and I thought this is really outstanding check out the color on that uh, if that's not really silver I think he calls it like a platinum if I'm not mistaken but I really like the way that wheel looks that is really sharp plus he's got a wide variety of designs he can make it's what's called custom make it how you want it you want something he can probably do it um, the more traditional scope wheels like that okay so more of the um what's it called the um well it's a comma uh nautilus okay so the nautilus the, this is more of the traditional nautilus design like this and this is one that i had him make and and it has this jd logo in it but more of an offset with a nautilus now sunder scopes require a fair amount of arc i've got a couple of brands of scope that have a um, a large arc radius from 10 to 55 so I need something that you know fairly at least that's almost 180 something along that line so know that he can help you out with that and I had him make this one for me for uh, I've got a uh, an Avenger an Air Venturi Avenger okay a scope uh, gun that I use to let uh, people shoot that that may new shooters go out kind of a long call it a loner gun that's what I do I call it a loner gun which is really not a bad gun and I've got a um, I got a Riton scope on it. Uh, really, those are nice scopes. If you haven't used one, try one. I think you're going to like it. And he made this for me. Got the Avenger logo for the Avenger gun. So again, he can make you about anything that you want for your for parallel from a parallax wheel. And he also has other accessories. He's got um, this is really nice. You'll want to get one of these as well. It's a pointer. And it attaches off. I'll install to show you how easy it is. It installs on your um, on your scope, and it aligns with if you're if you're not familiar with how these work, it aligns with the markings on the wheel so that you know what the uh, what the distance is. Okay, that really this is the way to go. I'm telling you, that is the hot lash up. Um, he makes wind indicators. He makes custom stocks. There's a you got. I'll, I'll put his website up here in just a second and i'll also put it at the end you've got to go to this website you got to check it out it is it's got a ton of stuff he's also got a um, right now he's got a, a special going where you order one of the uh, in, in your choice of parallax wheels get a speed wheel 
get a pointer, get and you get the little combo package, check that out because I think that's going to be the route you're going to want to go. It's really handy because you can change this and change this without having to change this. This stays with the scope. That's the cool thing about it is. So you can try different variety of wheels and that's what I like to do. See which one works the best for me. Because, and this is a little sidebar to what I'm telling you, um, the, the, the center of this to the end of this, the further that is, the greater the arc, the more um, incremental distances that you're going to get on your scope wheel when you're doing your range markings. Uh, that's, and that's very important. This scope is that way. One of the things I like about this, uh, this particular Hawk scope is that most field target shooters will tell you there's, they have a dead zone of their scope. It's kind of vague in terms of ranging correctly somewhere, and it varies. It can be 30 to 55 yards, you know, anywhere in there. That doesn't mean it's inclusive, but there's always a, an area somewhere in those distances that's just kind of real hard to tell. The scope is not that way. Um, I did this wheel the other day, and I was amazed at how accurate it was in terms of ranging distance. And I did a I did a video on ranging uh, your your wheel and determining all that and etc. Look at those other videos, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, so, and and I use a white electrical tape, and then I also once I get the I get it marked for my distances. Uh, I put a clear packing tape over it to protect because it will, you'll handle it enough that you'll rub it off if you don't. So just a little how-to, a little DIY type thing in there also as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the easy and the correct way to install your new Gen 2 um, parallax wheel from JDS Custom Designs. Okay, first of all, let's install our pointer. I'll show you how this is done. Uh, it takes a two and a half millimeter wrench, uh, and, and that's the size of the screw, so get one of those ready. But the way I put mine on is I put it back here next to the rear uh, scope ring, and there's a where the where the gap is in the scope ring, so I use that as kind of a kind of a guide. So I take and I put it right up against it, just like that. So I know that it is parallel with the scope from mounting the scope wheel. Then you just simply take the other half and love the way the thing clicks on. It, there's no gap, there's no slop, there's no anything. And then simply install the mounting screws. Again, I'm making sure that uh, this is properly lined up. And these don't need to be over tightened. And we'll run that down and that gets lined up like so. Make sure it's kind of just a little bit snug. This is all kind of done. So there you go. That is the installation of the pointer. Okay, something that is important when installing this, you want to make sure that, should get this, okay, see that notch, okay, that should go in, it should be in between the two set screws and be centered with the bottom notch. Reason being is the set screw puts pressure on the inner ring and it collapses it down around your turret. So you want to try and get it as close as possible, somewhere like that is kind of what you're looking for. Okay, so then what I would suggest doing is going ahead and sizing it. I could make that just a little bit more snug because a couple of things when you're you're going to need to to, to range mark your scope, and I'm going to show you a little a little trick that if you don't already know it. Continue to. Kind of sensors down. Um, you should be able to see back in here when those set screws start to put pressure on that ring. You can actually kind of feel it. 
you can move it a little bit with your fingers and just kind of make sure you don't need them overly snug it's just gonna just gonna fit on the on the turret and you got one side down we go ahead and check the other side Some long winded screws here. Oh, I can feel it starting to cinch down. Okay, so I'm gonna check the fit. Oh yeah, okay, good. See, it slips up on there. It's a little bit snug. That's what I want. I want it a little bit snug. Okay, let me show you something here. This is this is a very, very important step. And I'm gonna loosen these back up just a little bit. It'd be great if I was done. But for demonstration purposes, let me back this up just a little bit because I'm going to show you something that's real, real important. I need this to go up on there fairly easily so I can demonstrate this. Okay, so first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to go out to your range and you're going to find 55 yards with your scope. You want a nice, clear, sharp image picture and I've got some videos on what you can use and how you can do that. You can go back and refer to those. But you're going to want to set your focal, your, tur your parallax turret, you're going to want to get it set at 55 yards. Okay, so on this gun, this is about 55 yards. Now what is important, very important, is that you're going to take this assembly like this. Now I've already done this. You can see that I've already marked my, uh, my scope, my wheel. So what I'm going to do is I need to put this on here and back here I'm going to give it just about an inch or less somewhere right in there. And I'm going to say okay that's I, I've ranged it I got the wheel on there I got the tape I haven't marked anything so this is where this wheel needs to be. So I need to run this down just a little bit more. Make sure that it's snug on there. Get a little bit too loose. Okay. Parallax turret, 55 yards. I've already done all that. Everything's all set. And then I've got right there. And then I'm going to sense these set screws down just a little bit more. Okay. So I've got this back here. There's about an inch gap. Let me move this around. I'll try and show you here. So you see that there's about a one inch gap between the top of my uh, my wheel and this. And that's in case that you do have a little bit of fudge, you need to double check it. Once you get installed, go back and check it again. You can't over check things when you're trying to line things up. Okay, so you got your tape on here. You got your 55 yards. Now you're ready to mark your scope scope wheel. So. The key is don't worry about where where 10 yards lie. I know that, that some shooters may want to start at say 10 yards and really that's not a good idea. Let 10 yards fall where it may. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it, it is important that get this camera turned around here. It is important that the 55 yard because you need as much distance from here to here as you can afford on the wheel so that each incremental yardage is uh, spaced apart so that you don't have your numbers all bunched up. A larger wheel is a little bit more ideal in that respect, particularly if you've got uh, your, your uh, holdover is, is fairly broad in terms of, of uh, uh, mill dots. So what I can do is I can turn this back here and this should come up as I'm turning it and if I get it on there and it comes right up here to 10 yards. Kind of hard to tell on from this, this angle. So I can get that around there. And without tilting the gun, you really can't see it. 
but that's my 10 yard mark down there at the bottom. So now that I know that that is at 10 yards. Okay, so I'm satisfied with my 55 yards. I know that that's my 10, that's my maximum, so I put the tape on there and I go back and I mark it accordingly. Um, now, one of the things too about this, uh, this particular type of wheel, pop this off of here. Now, he's making this well in here, this area right in here, I call it a well, larger so now I can reach in there. If, I've got, if I need to turn my illumination on, I can get to it and turn the illumination knob. Whereas some of the earlier models, that made it a little bit more challenging and not the case in these. And some of the other brands, you, you can't get to it. You have to you have to take the wheel off. That's the beauty of this. You can take this wheel, you can take this off at will and access your parallel or your illumination uh, knob and turn it on and turn it off and then put this back on. Because it is keyed, you can't get it wrong. It will only go back on there in, in the same location as this. And so it's always going to be exact. You're not going to lose your settings. See how simple that was? I mean, the thing just pops on and it will just simply pop off too. It comes off, put that in your, in your back. Um, this is one of the lightweight wheels. Talk a little bit about some of this product here. This is one of the lightweight wheels. The, there are other wheels out there, other brands, and it might be a little bit um, heavy. And I know that I've got a scope that I've been using. It's actually the, my Falcon. My Falcon, man, it turns, it's a smooth, smooth scope. But the turret turns fairly free. There's really not any friction. I don't know if there's an O-ring in it. To be honest with you, I'm not sure what it rides on, but it's it's really easy to turn. And I think that I, that that if you put a heavy wheel on it, it would self-adjust. Okay, it changed parallax. I and mean, while you're looking through the scope, it could possibly change the parallax. These won't do that. This is ultra lightweight, yet very very durable. He makes out of a material. Also, the material he's using, I almost forgot, is a higher temperature. So if you're prone to leaving your gun in a hot car, at least your scope wheel, um, you don't have to worry about distortion and failure of the material. It would have to get something like 185 degrees before it sees distortion. And trust me, the inside of your car, 185 degrees, dude, you got other things melting. Okay, dashboard's gonna come off, you're gonna have problems. So know that this is a very high temperature grade type of material. If I didn't mention it before, you can get this in different colors. If, if I want this in a different color, if I want this in a different color, he can do that. He can do anything. All you got to do is ask him. He can do it. He can trick it out for you. Um, the the sub designs they will work on um, 25 to 41 millimeters. Okay, so you're not going to have a scope wheel that, that or a scope that he doesn't have a wheel a hub that will fit. It'll work with illuminated scopes to know that, okay? Um, he also, he told me the other day, he's now shipping to the UK. So uh, you can now get, uh, if you live overseas, he can hook you up, he can fix you up. Definitely give him a call. You wanna go to his website, I'll get that up there in just a second, and then some of the other contact information detail. And it, typically, you know, right now, you might be able to get within a week, week and a half, but do know that the orders, he's because of this new design, orders have picked up and guys are upgrading and they, they'll want to, you'll want to do that. You'll want to get a, as all of them as quickly as possible. So I guess guys, uh, until I, I see at the range, uh, stay safe, uh, shoot well, and have a great day.